you're watching Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart, OBE. From Christian Communications Network, welcome to Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart, OBE. Today, Dr. Stewart has a message which can help you find and fulfill God's purpose for your life. So join us now and be ready to note our contact details at the end of the program so that we can pray for your needs. Thank you for watching and God bless you. I do have a lot of my heart to share with you in the next couple of days. And I want to speak on the theme, life-giving leadership. And I want to remind each one of us that we are all leaders. That you are called to lead a life of victory for yourself. And to lead other people who you, are influence, who you have influence with to come into life also. The greatest example of life-giving leadership is Jesus Christ himself. Jesus, the Son of the living God. Yes, and it's him we come to lift up and declare. And I believe that he will come to you with new revelation. That will cause your faith to come alive. And those of you who need healing and miracles will also be able to receive. Every kind of bondage or limitation will have to leave. Because Jesus comes to set us free from every bondage, from every fetter. He comes to empower us to fulfill his purpose. And so I want to refer to a portion of scripture in Luke chapter 4. You can read it later, but it's found in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The main part of the story. It is the story how that Jesus himself walked into the synagogue and on a particular day he stood up and read from the prophet Isaiah and these are the words that he read. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then in verse 21, Jesus made a very important statement. He said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Jesus said, I am that person. And this is what I have come to do. He declared that he was the Son of God and that he had a purpose and a call to fulfill. And it's important for us to remember some of the things that he said here. He said, I'm come to the poor. I'm come to the brokenhearted, to the captive, to the blind, to the bruised. And he didn't come to them to leave them as they were. 
He came to them to change their lives. To meet their needs. To say to the poor, you don't really need to be poor anymore. To the broken hearted, your broken heart can be healed. To the captive, you can be set free from any captivity. And to those who have no vision, I will open your eyes. And those who are bruised and crushed with the hurts of life, he heals the bruised. And so Jesus shows us the example of what a life-giving leader is called to be and is called to do because we are called to do the very same thing. Now if you look at the earlier part of Luke chapter 4 you'll find that Jesus was just returned from the wilderness. He had been fasting and praying for 40 days. And during that time, he was tempted of the devil. And every time the devil came to him, Jesus replied with the word, it is written. And even after 40 days of fasting and being hungry, he was able to overcome the enemy right there in the wilderness. And this is an example for what we can do. He returned in the power of the Spirit, it says. And in verse 16, it says, he entered into the synagogue and he stood up to read. And I want us today to just think about the fact that we have been given a powerful position. Every one of us who have been born again of the Holy Spirit, we have been given a position of power. Just as Jesus was given a position of power, we are born again into his family. In John chapter 1 verse 12, it says that to all who received Jesus, he gave power to become the sons of God. So we have received Jesus. That means we are now part of his family. We are sons of God. And that's the most important position of all. To be in the family of God. To know you have a position given of God. A position for his purpose and a calling and a destiny to fulfill in this life. The secret of life giving leadership is maintaining an intimate relationship with the life giver. We must keep an intimate relationship with Jesus who is the life giver. From him flows all life. From him flows all wisdom. From him flows faith. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one that empowers us. The scripture says in him is all the wisdom and knowledge. Everything we need is in Jesus. And Jesus is in us. And we're in him. And we have been empowered to rule and reign in life. The Bible says in Romans 5.17 that those who receive the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. 
We're not meant to be reigned over by the devil. We're not meant to be reigned over by circumstances. We are meant to rule and reign. Because Jesus has brought us into his kingdom. And he has given us authority over all the works of the devil, over sickness and disease, over every deception of the enemy. So we can take steps today to bring the kingdom of God to our generation. We can be life-giving leaders, channels of the life of God. In fact, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 20, you are ambassadors for Christ. We have been given a position of ambassadors representing the kingdom of God. There's no higher kingdom. There's no greater power. There's no higher name than Jesus. No one else died on the cross but Jesus. No other religious leader could have paid for your sins. He's the only one who died on the cross and paid the price for your sins and he rose triumphant over death to show that we have victory over death we, we have victory over fear we have victory over sin we have, been, we have been called to be life giving leaders in the midst of a world that's overcome by death and darkness. Jesus said to his own people, you are the light of the world. You are like a city set on a hill. And you cannot be hid. And I find as we travel today, that many of God's people are not having the victories and the answers to prayer simply because they don't know their position. They're pleading with God to do everything. But I want to tell you, God has done everything that needs to happen. Now he wants us to stand up and say who we are. To speak forth and say what our mission is. Just like Jesus said. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to open the eyes of the blind, to set at liberty the bruised. We have this very same calling. We have the same anointing. We are in a position today to make a difference in our world. And today I believe we're going to be empowered. We're going to be encouraged. We're going to find answers to problems we didn't know what to do about. Because the spirit of revelation and wisdom is in this gathering. So listen to the Holy Spirit because he is speaking and he, he is moving and changes is going to happen and life is going to flow and victory is going to be experienced because the life givers in the midst of us Jesus is here today Jesus is here hallelujah come on give him a shout and give him a clap praise the name of the Lord forever hallelujah I want to tell you right at the beginning we have come to encourage you we have come to announce good news we have been called to empower people for divine purpose the hope of the world is that every believer will rise up and take their position. That every believer will recognize that they have been called and anointed and sent to work the works of God. 
We're not without power. We have been given power from God. Hallelujah. Amen. The secret of life-giving leadership is our intimate relationship with Jesus. And so we must maintain that every day. As we work, we talk to him. In our family, we talk to him. Wherever we are every day, we have constant fellowship with Jesus. Because Jesus loves to talk to his children. And he delights to bless you. He delights to cause you to know his voice and follow him. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and follow me. So we want to help you follow closer. So you can become even more effective and more uh, anointed of the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself maintained an intimate relationship with the Father. As we look at Jesus as an example, we see that he talked to the Father in the morning. In the evening, he was in the mountain praying. He said, I do only the things the Father tells me. I only speak the words the Father said to speak. He was totally honest the authority on leadership of the Father. And that was the secret of his power. That's why he was a life giver. The Bible says in Acts 10, 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all the who were of the devil because God was with him. God was with him because he was with God. God is with us as we work with God. We are workers together with him. So that's the key to our life. That's the secret to victory. Following close to Jesus every day. Jesus said in John 10 verse 30, the Father and me are one. And also in John 8, 29. He said, the Father has not left me alone. Because I do all of those things that please him. So I believe the key to life-giving leadership is treasuring the wonderful relationship we have and taking our position and using our authority because when we use our authority, God releases his ability. God is waiting on us to exercise our authority so he can release his ability. That is why in these seminars and crusades, people are set free from bondage of demonic powers, even as the word's been spoken. Sickness and disease leaves people because God releases his ability. When we take our position of authority. And automatically people come to Christ. Fetters fall off. The chains that bind will be broken. Because when we use our authority, God releases his ability. And he confirms his word with signs and wonders and miracles. But God is, I believe, in this hour, 
desiring to equip his people believers to take their position to walk in his ways to develop his character to be faithful people of integrity to speak the truth only to walk in a way that's honoring to God so we can be life giving leaders Jesus said the devil was a liar from the beginning. So, so we must maintain the truth. Because we are not of the devil, we are of Jesus. You remember what the Bible says in 1 John 4 4? He said, you are of God, little children, and have overcome the world, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You have the greater one within him. And so... We need to develop a God-conscious attitude. Before this time, we see a lot of disunity, we see a lot of reservations. People are not happy to attend to many churches, and now pastors are not ready to come together. But you can look at the large gathering here. It means that God has begun a new work. And I believe that God has specifically sent Dr. Seward into Ghana to come and advance and push forward the work. He has come so that we will be mobilized and that we will be energized, that we will also be able to do everything and become maximized. God's purpose for the parliament, God's purpose for our families, we have an intimate relationship with Jesus, the life giver. And God is using CCN to begin a new thing in Ghana. And I know, and I know that what has started has been started shall continue. You know, you can see that CCN meeting has drawn leaders across various churches in Ghana and across the land. It means that God has begun a new work in this land. Good change is coming. The wind of change is blowing. The blessing of God is upon us. His blessings on you every morning. Life giving leadership has been a blessing to us here in Ghana. We are honored to be with you today. And we're delighted to see this wonderful facility and the testimony it is to the goodness of the Lord Amen. and the proclamation of the gospel of Amen. Jesus Christ. For 10 years he couldn't lift a hand up, now he lifts it up. I do want to say from my heart that we're honored and privileged to be in Burma. <laughs> 
has the word first I grew up in the Republic of Ireland. It was a time of economic recession and very negative environment. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? David said, if it had not been for the Lord, we would have been swallowed up. We would have been destroyed. He's on our side. God is on our side. The enemies had plans to destroy you. But God is on your side. And David said, if it hadn't been for the Lord, where would we be? For a few moments, I want to speak on the theme, Strength in the Storms of Life. What Sissian meant to us uh, this time, it's been just life-giving moment. It's been brilliant, it's been life. It's just been revelation, not information. He brings purpose. He brings hope. He breaks the chains that bind. He delivers the captives. Jesus. Yes, sir. We are on the winning side. So we are not just fighting, but we are on, on the winning side. Sissian has been a great input in my ministry, in the church, in my life, in my family. I mean, whoever we talk to, they're just blessed. Thank you for watching today's program. We have a prayer team that would be happy to pray for your situation. So why not email us with your prayer request or write to the address on your screen? Make sure you contact us today. God bless you and we look forward to hearing from you. If you have been blessed in any way through today's programme, Dr Stewart would love to hear from you. We would be grateful if you would take time and send us your feedback and comments about today's broadcast. Send us an email or write to us at the address coming up. We really would appreciate your support and prayers for this growing ministry. Thank you, and may God bless you mightily, and we look forward to hearing from you today. This programme is brought to you by CCN from Belfast, Northern Ireland. For more information on today's programme, contact us today. CCN 646 Shore Road, White Abbey, County Antrim, Northern Ireland. BT 37 Zero PR. Telephone zero two eight nine zero eight five three nine nine seven. Email ccn at ccnorg.com or check out our website ccnorg.com. You're watching Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart, OBE. From Christian Communications Network, welcome to Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart, OBE. Today, Dr. Stewart has a message which can help you find and fulfill God's purpose for your life. So join us now and be ready to note our contact details at the end of the program so that we can pray for your needs. Thank you for watching and God bless you.
greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You have the greater one within. You have the greater one. And so we need to develop a God conscious attitude. Not magnifying the devil or problems. But let's magnify Jesus. Let's lift up his name. Let his word have first place. Let his word be in our hearts. Let his word be in our minds. Let his word be on our lips. Let's speak the word forth. So when we speak it forth, it has power to create. It has power to change. It has power to demolish strongholds. The word of God is alive and active. And it, it actually works when we speak it. And no word of God is void of power. His word's alive. Say his word's alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. So we need to be one with the Father. Life-giving leadership comes through our relationship. I want you to notice that Jesus proved the power of the word in the wilderness. That is a very important point. He proved the power of the word in the wilderness. When times are good, it's easy to get along well. But when you're in a wilderness in the worst times, you need to know the word works. The word works when you don't feel any presence of God. The word works when the enemy seems like he's pressing in on every hand. The Bible says when Jesus had fasted for 40 days, afterward the devil came. Satan will come to you at your weakest moment and try to defeat you. But the key to overcoming the devil is to do what Jesus did. Speak out the word. Declare it boldly. Jesus said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that the Father has spoken. When the enemy tried to get him to bow to him, Jesus said, it is written, you shall worship the Lord only, him only shall you serve. We need to speak out the word. It's not enough to have it in our hearts and minds. It needs to be in our mouths. Because the devil has no answer for the spoken word. To speak out the word. Speak the word over your family. Speak the word over your country. Speak the word over your circumstances. Say, I am blessed. Say, I'm a child of God. I'm an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. I am healed. I have all power in the name of Jesus. Speak out what God says. When the word's released, God's ability is manifested. And you have victory. And so Jesus proves the word in the wilderness. Even in the bad times, the word works. That's when you need to use your faith. I don't know what kind of wilderness you're in today. We have come through many wilderness experiences. When I was told that I had a very bad prognosis with cancer. And when the specialist said, I can promise you nothing. In my own self, I felt fear and I felt 
hopelessness. But that was not allowed to stay long in my mind. We began to rise up and say what God said. By his stripes I'm healed. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. He took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses. And both my wife and I are here today healed of cancer only because of the goodness of God. By the Hallelujah. Amen. It was the power of his word that defeated the devil. It was the power of the word that set me free from depression as a young man. It was the power of the word that healed me of tuberculosis in my lungs. The word of God is what created this world. God said, let there be in the world. When we speak the word, God establishes the truth. And the enemy has to leave. It's, it's interesting to note that just after Jesus spoke these words to the devil says the devil left the devil cannot stand the word I want to tell you we have the devil on the run we're not afraid of the devil the devil's afraid of us we are not afraid of any circumstance because our future is in the hands of Jesus. We are here today because of his almighty presence and his wonderful provision through the work of the cross. Say hallelujah. Amen. Many things happen to us as we are in the wilderness. We have faced financial crisis. In Northern Ireland, we've lived through 30 years of war and trouble and death. We know, what it, we know what it's like to feel fear all around us as people are being killed everywhere. But we also know what it is to have the protecting hand of God upon us. And to, to drive past bombs that didn't explode. To travel through the country preaching even when it wasn't safe because the gospel is the power of God to salvation and his word must prevail no matter what times we're in whether they're good times or bad times he's the same yesterday, today and forever hallelujah and I want to tell you he has good plans for this conference here we can expect great things let your expectation be sky high because he will do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think it's a very encouraging portion in first kings chapter 20 you can read it later in the 28th verse it was a time when God's people were under attack the enemy had come against them and they were very much under pressure but they had the victory on the mountaintop but the enemy said okay their God's just the God of the hills but let us fight them again in the valley and their God can, can't win in the valley and so they came against God's people again right in the valley but they discovered 
that God is not just the God of the hills that he's the God of the valley he's God in the wilderness he's God of the worst times he's God when you feel good he's God when you feel bad he's Lord all the time hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus proved the word in the wilderness. That's my very important point. Number two, Jesus stood up and spoke out. When Jesus walked into the synagogue that day, he stood on his feet and the book of the prophet Isaiah was given to him he, he, he found the place where it was written about him I believe we can find our place in the scripture so Jesus stood up and he said this is why I'm here this is who I am and I want you to know God has given you a position so you can know why you're here you can know your identity who you are you can stand on your feet and declare that you are what God says you are you can do what God says you can do you can fulfill his purpose so Jesus stood on his feet he declared his destiny he declared his identity and explained what he had come lives were going to be changed the poor, the broken hearted the captive, the blind the bruised they were going to be changed we have the same calling that's why we travel to many countries that's why we invest heavily financially that is why sometimes when we're tired and want to rest we go anyway because we have a great calling from God Almighty and there's no joy like seeing the joy of people's lives change no joy like seeing the lost coming to Christ no joy like seeing believers take their position and seeing, seeing them become empowered and equipped to fulfill their purpose. There is no joy like seeing God's leaders coming in unity. And that is one of the things we're called to do. To bring unity among leaders. 2 Corinthians 1.24 says, uh, by, by faith we stand we don't stand on our feelings we don't stand just because everything looks good or feels good we stand by faith and, and declare who we are and what we're called to do in Psalms 94, 16. Uh, the question is asked, who will rise up for me against the workers of iniquity? God wants people that will stand up for him who will not allow things to continue as they've always been. He wants people who'll say, but that can be changed. That strife in our family will cease. That turmoil of mine cannot stay. That disease has to leave. That hatred can be turned to love. That division is going to change into unity. We're here to change things. We're here to declare 
your kingdom rule. We're here to say that we're anointed to work the works of God. And this is our hour to bless our generation. Hallelujah. It has been said that evil prevails when good men do nothing. So we need to rise up and do what we can while we can. In 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 8, Paul spoke to the church. And he said, I'm so glad that you have sounded out the word. You have made known the word everywhere. So I don't even need to say it anymore. His church was so active. So full of the word. So full of life-giving leadership. That that word was spreading everywhere. They were standing up and speaking out. And we need to know that we can stand up in faith and courage. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter 1.3 that he's already given us all things that pertain to life You don't have to wait for God to give it to you. He's already given. You don't have to wait for God to bless you. He's already blessed you. Ephesians, Ephesians 1.3 says he has blessed us. With all spiritual blessings. In heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. We are blessed. The, the devil would like us to think we're not blessed. But we are blessed. We are forgiven. The blood of Jesus has cleansed us. We don't have to live in guilt anymore. If you have repented and been born again, you are a new creation person. You don't have to live in grief and anguish and sorrow. There's no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible also says in Colossians 1.13 that he has already translated us out of the kingdom of darkness. He's already brought us into the kingdom of his dear son. And then it says in whom we already have redemption. Redemption. That's a wonderful word. We have been bought back by the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been redeemed by the blood. The devil has no claim on us any longer. Without the blood of Jesus, we'd still be in our sins. There was no other blood that could wash us from all our sin and death. But the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin and makes us as though we'd never sinned. We were born into this world in a position of sin, guilty and lost. But now we're redeemed. We are brought into the kingdom of light. Ambassadors for Jesus. What a wonderful word. Hallelujah. What a great position we've been given. Rise up and get excited about it. We're redeemed. Hallelujah. We're victorious. We have been redeemed. Redeemed by the blood. I want to tell you something very special. You are highly valued. 
God Almighty loved you so much he gave Jesus his son. So never let the devil tell you you're no good. Never let the devil tell you you have no purpose. You are made in the image and likeness of God. And you are more than a conqueror. Redeemed, hallelujah. Redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. You're watching Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart, OBE. Before this time, you see a lot of disunity, you see a lot of reservations. People are not happy to attend to many churches and now uh, pastors are not ready to come together. But you can look at the large gathering here. It means that God has begun a new work. And I believe that God has specifically sent Dr. Seward into Ghana to come and advance and push forward the work. He has come so that we will be mobilized and that we will be energized, that we will also be able to do everything and become maximized. God's purpose for the parliament, God's purpose for our families, we have an intimate relationship with Jesus, the life giver. God is using CCN to begin a new thing in Ghana. And I know, and I know that what has started has been started shall continue. You know, you can see that. CCN meeting has drawn leaders across various churches in Ghana and across the land. It means that God has begun a new work in this land. Good change is coming. The wind of change is blowing. The blessing of God is upon us. His blessings on you every morning. Life giving leadership has been a blessing to us here in Ghana. We are honored to be with you today and we're delighted to see this wonderful facility and the testimony it is to the goodness of the Lord and the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. couldn't lift a hand up, now he lifts it up. I do want to say from my heart that we're honored and privileged to be in Ghana. As the word took first place in my life, the burdens began to leave. Hallelujah! I grew up in the Republic of Ireland. It was a time of economic recession and very negative environment. If it had not
not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? David said, if it had not been for the Lord, we would have been swallowed up. We would have been destroyed. He's on our side. God is on our side. The enemies had plans to destroy you. But God is on your side. And David said, if it hadn't been for the Lord, where would we be? For a few moments, I want to speak on the theme, Strength in the Storms of Life. What Christian meant to us uh, this time, it's been just life-giving moment. It's been brilliant, it's been life. It's just been revelation, not information. He brings purpose. He brings hope. He breaks the chains that bind. He delivers the captives. Jesus. Yes, sir. We are on the winning side. So we are not just fighting, but we are on, on the winning side. CCN has been a great input in my ministry, in the church, in my life, in my family. I mean, whoever we talk to, they're just blessed. for watching today's program. We have a prayer team that would be happy to pray for your situation. So why not email us with your prayer request or write to the address on your screen. Make sure you contact us today. God bless you and we look forward to hearing from you. This program is brought to you by CCN from Belfast, Northern Ireland. For more information on today's program, contact us today. CCN 646 Shure Road, White Abbey, County Antrim, Northern Ireland, BT 370PR. Telephone 028-9085-3997. Email ccn at ccnorg.com or check out our website ccnorg.com.